Built in the middle of Dublin Bay to receive coal cargoes from England, the Pigeon House Station supplied Dublin. It was the biggest station in the country, although there were 300 other stations elsewhere in the state, mostly tiny and very inadequate. It was obvious that something had to be done. If Ireland was to have an industrial revival and improve her agricultural methods, there must be power available throughout the land. Doyle Eyre, and when still outlawed, set up a commission of inquiry into the use of native resources. But the great project was to stem from the experiences of a young Drogheda man, Tommy McLaughlin. After a brilliant academic career, the 27-year-old Tommy McLaughlin went to work for the great German engineering firm of Siemens Schuchert. And he came home to Ireland for Christmas 1923. On December the 28th, he met the President of the Executive Council, Mr. Cosgrave, and other ministers. In a few short weeks, he persuaded the government to agree to consider a formal proposal from Seaman Schuchert. Joe McGrath, as Minister for Industry and Commerce, told his departmental secretary, Gordon Campbell, to write to Siemens in Berlin. The government's offer and Siemens' reply were published as a white paper. We accept the complete contents of this letter from the Irish government, including all its interpretations and modifications of obedient servants, Siemens Schuchert Werke. When it was ready, Siemens' plan was sent to the new Minister for Industry and Commerce, Mr. Patrick McGilligan. Fortified with the firm approval of international experts, the minister was able to tell Doyle Aaron of the government's decision to go ahead and to introduce the Shannon Electricity Bill of 1925. 5,000 workers have come from all over Ireland and from Germany to scour the earth and move it by the ton load to one side or another. Some of the equipment is old-fashioned, but much modern machinery has come by sea from Germany, including railway locomotives, for which lines were laid down over the whole countryside. There are machines to dig and to scoop and even fashion the slope of the headrace canal. For 10 miles, the Shannon side country resounds the grating, tearing noises of machinery. The excavators and the transporters, which were designed for bringing brown coal from the mines in Germany, and which are now brilliantly adapted to this immense project of civil engineering. In the early stages of the work, the embankments were formed by tipping in layers from wagons. The wagons were loaded with earth and rock, scooped out by bucket excavators, and then trains, hauled by 200 horsepower steam locomotives, move between the banks to deposit their loads further and further south towards Ardna Crusher. From the new weir below Killaloo, it's eight miles to the dam at Ardna Crusher, where the intake openings are already taking shape. And here again, masses of new concrete. Through these openings, where you see a man now walking, there will surge a wedge of water, a build-up of water fed from 4,000 square miles of river and lake. And all of it will go through the intakes and down the tubular penstocks to these turbines below. And it's here that the scheme is seen in all its massive greatness. Truly, there was never anything like this in Ireland before. The year is 1927 and the work is half done. This will be the core of the scheme, the power station. To get the water of the Shannon here, a hundred feet over its natural level, rivers have had to be diverted, hills cut through, valleys filled in and roads built. Massive machinery makes it possible to excavate nearly 300 million cubic feet of earth and rock. The mammoth powerhouse is going to receive the fruits of the work. It's 1927, the world takes note and the people of Ireland come in their thousands to see for themselves. The scheme was half completed 
and Mr. McGilligan had the ESB bill passed by the Oireachtas. Sailstar Aaron, November 27 of 1927, Electricity Supply Act 1927. An act to make provision for the reorganization and regulation of the generation, transmission, distribution and supply of electricity throughout Sayerstad Erin, and in particular to make provision for the generation of electricity in the works constructed by the state under the Shannon Electricity Act 1925. It was the first time the state had gone into business and T.A. McLaughlin became the ESB's first managing director. Both he and Minister McGilligan set about a formidable task, that of winning people over to support the whole project, but there was much pessimism then in Ireland. Finally, the great day came, the 22nd of July, 1929, when President Cosgrave arrived to throw the switch which would open the sluice gates and allow the waters of the Shannon to move along the new course towards Ardna Crusher and Parteen. Our greatest, our most famous river, is entering upon a new chapter of its long story. Henceforth, the Shannon will be harnessed in the service of the nation, distributing light, heat and power throughout the Seastot, increasing at once the comfort of our homes and the productive capacity of our farms and factories. Thereby has been laid the firm foundation of confidence, both at home and abroad, in our capacity to realize close economic developments of wide national effect to which we all look forward. The button pressed, the gates raised, the water surges through the new canal. Before long, the head race was full. From Killaloo, all the way downstream, the traces of building, the mammoth equipment and the 5,000 workers all seem to have disappeared to leave the Shannon do its own work. Behind them, they left the new headrace canal, pursuing its straight course from Weir to Powerhouse. <laughs> 